Welcome to this BBTV trilogy, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. This is episode two in the trilogy with Eric Wolf of the World Food Travel Association. Hello again, Eric. Hi, Malcolm. Good to be back. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this because I'm, I'm so passionate about the work that you do and the sector as well. So, Eric, here at BVTV, we have our own Conscious Compass channel, which is about planet, people, profits and purpose. I feel that such thinking can help food service businesses in their future with an almost start a fresh approach. You know, consider buying better and offering greener, reduce waste and energy and above all, have purpose and create a resilient career for people, not just a job. What's your thoughts? You're absolutely right. Things have really changed in the past couple of years, not just because of the pandemic, but also the situations around the world with some of the riots and protests that we've seen, the George Floyd uh, series of riots that, that started, uh, kicked off in the US and were heard around the world. People are really reevaluating what it means to almost be human and how we talk with each other, how we interact with each other, how we respect each other or not. And you also see, I think it was perhaps the millennials that instilled quite a bit of this um, new way of thinking into their children. And now this Generation Z or Z uh, generation is emerging and they're becoming consumers, they're becoming travelers, or they will be as soon as they, the travel restrictions are, are lifted. But mm -hmm. they're really starting to think seriously about where they're going to spend their money. And it's no secret that they want to uh, vote with their wallets pretty much like their, their parents did as well, support businesses that share their values, support businesses that give people fair wages, that pay suppliers fair prices, and so on. And so what people are doing, what consumers are doing is they're doing the research. They're checking out the companies that they want to do business with ahead of time. So if an airline has no carbon offset program, for example, they'll try to avoid that airline. Or if a business does not recycle and it's well known, they'll avoid that business. And not only that, but they'll shame them on uh, uh, tools like Facebook and so on. So I think that what this has done is really teach businesses that they need to, to change things. They need to shake things up. And it's no secret that societies only progress when the status quo is challenged. So we need to challenge the, the business status quo, how we do business. And it's everything from, of course, the recycling, but it is the sourcing of the products as well. How are we sourcing them? Where are we sourcing them from? Um, it is how we treat our employees. Are we paying them fair wages? Do we have benefits programs in place, in place and so on? And we, we really just have to think about all of those different issues. And a lot of business owners will say, well, that sounds like a lot of time and money that I'm going to have to invest. And actually, it is an investment back in your business. I always say to businesses that, that balk at the idea that the fastest internet speed you can buy is an unneeded expense. And I call it a marketing mm -hmm. expense because if you have the fastest internet speed available and your customers can upload their videos and photos in real time while they're in your business, then they're going to get uploaded. But if you're relying on them to go back to their hotel or worse, get back home and then upload those photos, the, the, the amount of participation is going to fall dramatically. And so it's the same kind of thing to invest in your people, your products and so on. But don't just complain that it's a, an expense, an unnecessary business expense. Actually celebrate it and tur turn it into a marketing triumph. So make a statement, uh, use your menus. We say something called um, uh, menu messaging. It's a term that, that we invented here at the association and it's it's uh, using the menu to communicate information. So more than just the food that you're trying to sell, you may have seen menus that talk about perhaps the building or the chef's philosophy, mm -hmm. uh, the history of the food or something like that. And at, at a very minimum, sometimes businesses will say, well, we source all of our products from, and it has a list of their providers. But use menu messaging to make statements about the business. You know, we pay all of our workers 20% more than the, the currently published uh, standard minimum living wage. Um, we invest back in our, our workers with um, education investment or whatever it is. You know, we source all of our, we source 98% of our products within a 100 mile or 160 kilometer radius. Whatever those things are, um, those should be showcased on the menu. They should be talked about. They should be marketed. They should be published. They should uh, be 
allowed to have that word of mouth engine happen because those those are the things that will get people excited to come to your business so just putting a menu on your storefront is is no longer enough you really have to show how you participate and support community and by doing so it will come back around in in um, to benefit you in the form of filling your wallet and filling your your business with customers I think that's so true. Absolutely true there. And ever since I first encountered you, I've been preaching that, by the way, Eric. And uh, those people that have listened uh, across that time there have really improved their business dramatically. And they have thought of better in the community. Thanks, Eric. Now, let me remind our audience of your URL, your website address, which obviously viewers, you can see on the screen behind me. But for listeners, let me spell that out. It's all the W's, all the W's, worldfoodtravel.org, worldfoodtravel.org. Go there and find out more about Eric's tremendous activity and how you can broaden your ability on food tourism. I also suggest when you're there to sign up to be a free member of the Gastro Terror community. Eric is the author of Culinary Tourism, The Hidden Harvest. We're living in a changed world, but to me, change means opportunity. I suggest guests and customers want new choices and to travel and to eat in thinking with their conscience. Eric Wolf has kindly shown us direction there. Thanks, Eric, for episode two in your trilogy. Thank you, Malcolm.